So if you were one of the lucky ones to find an RTX 3080 at launch, now you run the potential risk of having a faulty graphics card that may lead to crashes to your desktop or graphical artifacting. So we're going to talk about it here in this vlog. Let's jump into it. But if this is your first time to the channel and you want to learn more about building PCs and other tech related stuff, consider clicking the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a thing. What's happening YouTube and the internet, Terrence here, and we are back inside the lab. And today we're doing another vlog, just like we did last week. And if you weren't around for that video, I'll throw a link up to the card here so you can give that one a watch after checking this uh, vlog or this video out. And today we're talking about the many woes that have been reported about the RTX 3080. For reports coming in that gamers or users are experiencing CTDs that's crashing to desktop and artifacting from graphics cards from MSI, EVGA, Zotac, uh, Gigabyte, among others. And so the culprit appears to be the different types of capacitors used um, from NVIDIA, which range from high-end capacitors to low-end capacitors. NVIDIA hasn't released an official statement on this issue just yet, but there was an EVGA spokesman who kind of mentioned that this is, this is the reason why one of their EVGA cards was delayed and there's reports coming in that gamers are experiencing these issues when the graphics card when the RTX 3080 uh, overclocks or this is more so specifically from RTX 3080s that are overclocked from the manufacturer or from third-party vendors like MSI and EVGA and these graphics cards normally come advertised as already factory overclocked so they're already kind of to their maximum limit if you will and this is something EVGA really does well in my opinion but the the issue appears to be happening when the RTX 3080 um the turbo boost gets near 2 2000 gigahertz or 2.0 2.0 gigahertz which is interesting because my RTX 2080 Ti I can overclock that to somewhere between 2000 to 21 2000 to 2.1 gigahertz easy like and be stable in most of the games that I play but the problem appears to happen gamers appear to experience these crashes to the desktop or the game will freeze and then they'll get the crash or the return to desktop but they're experiencing this when their graphics cards are hitting somewhere between 2 gigahertz and Nvidia hasn't again Nvidia hasn't came out with an answer to this problem yet we could imagine that we or we can hope that there'll be a driver update that nvidia will come out that will fix this issue but i mean that remains to be seen one apparent fix that appears to work or at least put a band-aid on the bullet wound if you will a temporary solution is to underclock your gpu using msi afterburner and that's maybe dropping dropping down to about 100 megahertz and also under vault in your graphics card that way it just it utilizes less power and it runs a little bit more efficiently or it doesn't have to run as hard. Now, the capacitors on a graphics card, in a nutshell, they're responsible for like filtering clean, clean energy to the GPU to enable it to pretty much to, to pretty much run with as much power that's available to it. Now, somewhere between the capacitors communicating with the GPU die. This could be an issue with these lower end capacitors. It's just mind boggling that it's happening this early in the RTX 3080 launch. I mean, should you be concerned? Possibly, possibly if you bought one on day one or you bought one at release, then maybe you should be. So tell us down in the comment section below if you have an RTX 3080 and if you have experienced these problems or if you haven't experienced these problems and what you may have done to provide a solution to not disrupt your gaming experience. And now this is something we talked about on a few live streams, a few, actually more than one. And we did a dedicated live stream on this. And we talked about, you know, buying RTX 3080 or buying a graphics card on launch, right? Buying one on day one. Is it a good idea? And I said this, I said, it's in my opinion, no, it's not a good idea to buy, you know, to buy, especially a graphics card on day one. It's better to let the, you know, early adopters run into these issues and that way NVIDIA can get them resolved, say in later 
product batches. But, you know, on top of that, it, it also boils down to those who went out and sold their RTX 2080 Ti's or their 2080s, although the, the RTX 3070 isn't quite here yet. And it remains to be seen if we're going to run into these same problems that um, the, the RTX 3080 did. And you would hope that NVIDIA has taken notice of this and they're already trying to rectify the problem with going with the higher end, um, higher end capacitors in later batches because the RTX 3090 is essentially already here and it remains to be seen as well as if that graphics card is going to run into the same problem but hopefully the RTX 3070 can be um, hopefully this problem can be rectified before they launch out or before they go out to third-party vendors and before Nvidia you know makes their reference cards makes their reference versions of the graphics card because that graphics card is going to be harder to find, in my opinion, than the RTX 3080 was. It's just going to be harder to find. Um, th there's going to be such a high demand for the performance value. The RTX 3070 is, at least by NVIDIA, if you're going by what NVIDIA is telling us, the graphics card is going to offer similar performance to an RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti, somewhere in between there. Similar is key but at a much lower price. And then there's RDNA 2, set to launch October 28th. It's set to release October 28th. And, you know, I hope to also think that AMD is paying attention now so that they can avoid these temporary hiccups with their launch and that, you know, we can see a clean um, RX 6000 series launch with the big, with big Navi that, you know, I also talked about in our last week's vlog that it's a graphics card that I'm looking forward to, especially with the early rumors, which I really don't like, you know, speaking on rumors because a rumor is a rumor until proven otherwise. And, you know, I can wait until October 28th to see what AMD has to offer compared to Ampere or the RTX 3000 series and also letting these early hiccups um, get sorted out between NVIDIA and their third-party vendors. That way you get a graphics card that's going to work the way you expect it to, especially when you pay, you know, if you didn't pay MSRP, then, you know, I don't know. But if you didn't, if you didn't pay MSRP, which hopefully you did, hopefully you didn't, you know, pay too much or pay more than what the graphics card is really worth. But if you did snag an RTX 3080, at MSRP, like if you were running the lucky ones to do so, um, you know, I was an early adopter of RTX 20 series, right? And I had 1080 Ti's. And at the time, you know, the community was pointing out that Pascal was still more than enough. And most users wasn't interested in ray tracing or RTX, the new branding. And so the general idea was the early adopters with the RTX 20 series, we were you know, test dummies for NVIDIA pretty much because those graphics cards was essentially overpriced. So when you look at Ampere, you're like, oh, these graphics, you're getting such great value for the cost, like NVIDIA lowered the cost. One would argue that, um, you know, the RTX 20 series Turing, Turing was overpriced. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the RTX 3080. And I kind of, I kind of predicted this happening. I recommended that you wait, wait until after the graphics cards launch, take a look at the numbers. If you have an RTX 2080 Ti or an RTX 2080 and you still game at 4K or if you game at 1440p, ask yourself, was the or are the extra 10 to 15, 20 to 25 frames worth it depending on the game you play and depending on the resolution and refresh rate your monitor is. So anyway, that'll be all for this one. Thanks for giving it a watch. I hope to catch you all on the next one. So until then, be easy.